Today we are myth busting. I'm gonna be breaking down the common eye and vision myths that I hear all the time from my patients in the clinic to things I see on the internet, which honestly get a little scary. So let's find out what's the truth and what's BS. First, let's start off with the historical myths, the ones that we've heard since we were young kids. Number one is that eating more carrots will improve your eyesight. This myth actually started as World War II propaganda, and basically people have believed it ever since. But unfortunately, no, eating more carrots won't give you superpowers, won't help you reverse your need for glasses or anything like that. Carrots are a good supply of beta carotene, which your body converts to vitamin A, and vitamin A is an essential nutrient for the eyes and your vision. But getting more vitamin A and having more beta carotene from eating carrots, again, won't enhance your eyesight in any way. Unless you happen to be severely malnourished and deficient in vitamin A and having night blindness, then yeah, having more vitamin A may help. But again, it won't reverse your need for glasses or anything like that. Next is reading in dim light will ruin your eyesight. Again, this is a really old school myth. I've read this in an old medical book from the 1800s even. And it makes sense because if you try to read in dim light, you strain your eyes and that kind of hurts and you think it might ruin your eyes. But no, simply trying to read in dim light means that your pupil dilates and you lose your depth of focus and you end up causing more eye strain. But it won't necessarily cause damage to your eyes or make you need stronger reading glasses or anything like that. So if you happen to enjoy reading or watching movies or playing video games in the dark, go right ahead. It's not gonna hurt your eyes at all. But you may notice less eye strain if you turn on a light or two. Next up is sitting too close to the TV is bad for your eyes. I'll admit this is one that I did when I was a young kid and my parents would always say, don't sit so close to the TV. Let me know if you've ever gotten so close up to the TV that you saw the individual like red, green, and blue colors. You know, where you see the individual pixels on the screen. <laughs> Let me know if you've ever seen that because yeah, I would, I would get that close as a kid. But no, there's nothing magical about the TV that's causing damage to the eyes or anything like that. However, being indoors for longer periods of time and looking at near devices, again, for a longer period of time is associated with a higher risk of young children developing higher amounts of nearsightedness. But as I've mentioned in some other videos, there have been studies showing that spending at least two hours a day outside sort of negates a lot of those kind of influences to develop more nearsightedness. And that's why you hear so many doctors these days telling kids to put down devices and get outside a little bit more. So in short, again, no TVs, not ruin your eyes. Next, 2020 means perfect vision. I actually did a video once on what 2020 really means. And if you want to nerd out and know the like exact definition, I'll put that link in the video description below. However, 2020 doesn't mean perfect vision. 2020 is really just kind of the standard vision, which if you have normal eyes that are healthy and you've had a good visual processing center develop from when you're a young kid, most people should be able to obtain and see a 2020 line on the vision chart. But it's not uncommon for a lot of my patients to see better than 2020. But I often get them seeing to 2015. I've even had five or six patients in my career hit the 2010 line, which is twice as good as the 2020. So no, 2020 isn't perfect vision. It's just kind of the standard. Now let me know if you've heard this one, that if you cross your eyes, they will stay that way. Obviously this one is not true. When somebody does have a cross eye, we call that having strabismus. And there's different types of strabismus, but most cases are either congenital, like somebody is born with it, or maybe after a few years of life, a young child who's maybe farsighted learns that they can see better naturally by using their eye muscles, but that causes their muscles to turn inward. And then maybe they'll have a preference for one eye while the other eye is turned in. And Thankfully, if we catch that early enough, we can prescribe proper glasses and that'll straighten the eyes out and fix it. Otherwise, when adults develop a cross eye, it's usually because of something happening with the eye muscle or perhaps one eye has lost vision or gone blind in a way from damage. And then the good eye kind of takes over, hyper focuses, and the other eye ends up just kind of giving up and the eye muscles turn in. But no, if you choose to cross your eyes a whole bunch, it may cause a lot of eye strain, but it won't stay that way. Next up are the common questions and myths I get from patients in the eye clinic. First is that wearing eyeglasses will make your eyesight worse or make you dependent on them. No, wearing prescription glasses is not going to make your eyesight worse. It's just kind of a cerebral kind of psychological effect because 
wearing glasses helps you see a lot better and clearer. And then when you take them off, your brain is comparing how good it was seeing, like the high definition vision with glasses, to how you were seeing without them. And so you learn to prefer seeing really well in sharp vision. And so it's really just comparing those two, but it doesn't necessarily push and make your eyes worse or again, more dependent on needing the glasses. Also in the need of needing stronger reading glasses as you get older, right? As we're over the age of 40, people need reading glasses and people notice, hey, at 40, they can maybe start at like the plus 100 level, but by the time they're like 55 or 60, they need like plus two or 250. But that's not because the reading glasses are making your eyes worse or more dependent. It's that normally just with age, you need stronger powers because the lens changes inside of the eye. And really just that awareness is more of a coincidence. Next, will phones and computer screens damage your eyes in any way? I think the answer to this is pretty obvious because we all are staring at our phones and computers all day and nobody's really going blind from it. It's true that focusing on something up close like a computer screen or maybe a cell phone that you hold really close to your face, that will increase your risk for eye strain and people tend to blink much less often when you're staring at these screens and that ends up translating to worse dry eye symptoms. And maybe again for young children, holding things really close to the face for long periods of time and remaining indoors may increase the risk for nearsightedness. Otherwise, no, looking at these digital screens aren't really hurting our eyes long term. And this kind of leads into the next myth that blue light hurts our eyes. Without going too deep into the science of it, the simple answer is no. The amount of blue light that comes from your digital screens is not anywhere powerful enough to really cause a biohazard or damage to the eye. The vast majority of blue light you'll ever see in your lifetime, in fact, comes from the power of the sun. The human eye has evolved to have certain pigments in the retina in the back of the eye to shield and absorb the high energy blue light from sources, things like the sun and the digital screens. These pigments are known as lutein and zeaxanthin, and we get them just naturally in our diets and basically work as an antioxidant and anti-inflammatory, again, to protect the eye from oxidative stress and damage from high energy light. It's true that blue light does scatter more inside the eye and often is attributed to more problems with glare. And exposure to blue light is known to influence our sleep cycles and even our metabolism in some studies. Blue light glasses are still a thing and some doctors do recommend them for people with either eye strain issues or maybe they're concerned that they have a retinal disease and they just wanna have as most protection as they possibly can against blue light. However, I feel the eye care and medical communities have largely kind of backed away from the whole blue light glasses thing because it kind of got out of control uh, back in 2020. And we just have more research that has come out. And so I think a lot of people are kind of hesitant if blue light glasses are really necessary or not. But again, anecdotally, some people still just love the blue light glasses. And if you are worried about blue light affecting your sleep, best to just turn off the digital devices or at least turn on kind of the blue light filtering modes on most phones and computers. The next myth is that if you have astigmatism, you can't get contact lenses, and you can't get LASIK. It's sad that we still hear this all the time because I don't think this has been true for like 30 to 40 years. People with astigmatism can easily be fit into just about any type of contact lens. Even the soft contact lenses now come in pretty high powers for correction of astigmatism. And people with extreme levels of astigmatism, they may need to go into a specialty lens, but they're still available and can help them see pretty easily. And for people who are interested in LASIK, yes, astigmatism can be corrected with LASIK, even up to almost five diopters of astigmatism, which is a lot of astigmatism. Plus there's been many other procedures invented and advanced that now can be mixed and matched with LASIK to help correct for astigmatism. How about this one? Contact lenses can get stuck behind your eye. This is a common fear I think everyone gets when you first get contact lenses, but no, the eyeball has a clear membrane around it called the conjunctiva, and there is no way for contact lenses to get through that and get stuck behind the eye. Basically, the top of your eye is just a dead end where things can get trapped up there, but they can't get all the way behind the eye and get to your brain or anything like that. But if you do ever get stuck with a lens way up there and you can't get it out, I did do a helpful video kind of walking you through that process, and you can check that out if that ever happens. And then getting lazy means you'll never need eyeglasses again. LASIK eye surgery will permanently reshape the surface of your eye to help you see better, but unfortunately, by the time everybody hits about 40, 45 years of age, 
our lens inside the eye starts to crystallize and this becomes rigid and it becomes very hard for us to focus on near objects. That's why you see people needing things like reading glasses or starting to wear the dreaded B word in eye care bifocals. So if you've had in mind that you just get LASIK and be done with glasses and contacts the rest of your life, unfortunately that's just not realistic. At some point you may still need glasses later in your life, even after LASIK. Okay, now let's talk about the real interesting myths, the ones that I see all the time here on the internet. First is that eye exercises can reverse your need for glasses. I honestly wish this one was true because it would revolutionize the entire eye care industry, but it just doesn't work that way. In fact, this myth has been around since the 1800s, maybe even longer, and you would think in this many hundreds of years, we'd have some evidence that this really did work. I always see these kind of trending videos pop up in my feed of people trying eye exercises and they claim that it helps, but it's always by somebody who has no idea what they're talking about. And honestly, designing a study to show that eye muscle exercises would even work would be pretty easy to design. And maybe, who knows, if you stick around, subscribe to the channel, maybe I'll end up doing a video on that this next year. Trying to prove or disprove if eye muscle exercises actually do anything for your prescription at all. There are some eye exercises that have been well studied and are used for certain eye conditions, such as convergence insufficiency, for example. This is where somebody can't cross their eyes appropriately and they always see double when they're trying to read. In those cases, eye exercises known as vision therapy, orthoptics, or vision rehabilitation can be prescribed and that will help somebody improve their eye muscle coordination and that can improve, again, how they use their eyes, but it doesn't reverse their need for glasses. Like it won't take you from being a minus two diopter nearsighted to being back to zero. And I think anybody who's made videos and claimed that they've been able to reverse their need for glasses with those methods simply just have no idea what they're talking about. And if they did reverse it, it happened because of some other mechanism and not because of the eye muscle exercises. Next myth is sun gazing improves eyesight. By sun gazing, I mean people who purposefully stare at the sun for a certain length of time. Sun gazing has been part of several religious and sort of naturopathic healing practices over time, but has never been shown in any research to improve the health of the eyeball in any way. And if anything, is a high risk for permanent damage and blindness. In fact, just a few months ago, I had a patient who came in with permanent vision loss and having spots in their eyesight that never go away because they stared at the sun. You know how if you take a magnifying glass outside, it'll focus the light to a single point and you can burn ants or start a fire or something like that? Well, the lens inside of your eye magnifies the light exactly that same way and the sun rays will focus to the retina and burn a hole in it, something that we call solar retinopathy. And again, this can result in permanent vision loss and blindness. So absolutely not, please do not stare directly at the sun, despite what internet health gurus may tell you. Next castor oil is good for the eyes. I've heard and read things on the internet that castor oil could improve your dry eyes, it'll get rid of your cataracts, it'll cure your eye floaters. It's true that castor oil is found as an ingredient in some eye drops for dry eyes, mostly because the oil helps tears not only stick to the eye, but also prevents them from evaporating off of the eye's surface. But unfortunately, there is no evidence that getting castor oil and putting that in your eye will permanently cure your dry eyes, or that it could even get inside the eye to cure things like a cataract or eye floaters. Anybody who may have tried castor oil and noticed improvements in their eyesight probably just noticed improvement due to less dry eye symptoms. I think the issues that eye doctors have about patients trying this on their own is because one, there's no real scientific studies to show that it works, and two, when you go online to buy castor oil, there's really no regulation of what's in castor oil or how it was made or stored. And if that perhaps is truly what's in the bottle and who knows what you're putting in your eyes at that point. But otherwise, if you see people saying that castor oil will heal all these things on the eye, no, it's just a big ploy to try to sell you something and get your hard-earned money. Next up is N-acetylcarnosine eye drops for reversing cataracts. If you've never heard of NAC eye drops or this N-acetylcarnosine eye drops, these are basically working as an antioxidant and have been kind of 
preached on the internet that, again, they can reverse cataracts because a lot of cataracts that are forming inside the eye do form out of oxidative stress. And the idea is that if you're adding an antioxidant to the eye, then that'll stop the cataracts from forming or even maybe reverse them. That's at least the idea, but again, there are zero research studies really showing that this is true in any capacity. In fact, the inner eyeball already has tons of antioxidant capacity, mainly through vitamin C. In fact, the highest concentration of vitamin C in your whole body is inside of the eye. But unfortunately, no, there's no evidence that NAC eye drops do anything. And again, I think the people who are preaching this are just trying to sell you something and make money off you. And the next is MSM eye drops cure eye floaters. If you've never heard of MSM eye drops, this stands for methyl sulfonyl methane. And these are eye drops and kind of a supplement that's been around again for a long time and is often preached by alternative medicine practices. This is a naturally occurring compound that works as an anti-inflammatory and again, an antioxidant and has often been seen to kind of be promoted to be helpful for eye floaters. However, again, there are no studies showing that MSM eye drops do anything at all for the eyes. And with a lot of these alternative medicine eye drops, they've never really been studied, not only just for their effectiveness and doing anything that they're claiming to help with, but they've never really been studied for safety either. So as an eye doctor, if you ever came in and you said you've been using this, I'd always be like, eh, be pretty cautious because you don't know if that's gonna end up causing a disease. And unfortunately, there's just a lot of predators out there who will try to say and scam you and try to get you to buy anything. So if you do ever see a product online or on social media that seems too good to be true, definitely talk to your local eye care professional about it and ask what they think if they've read anything about it. Because good chance it's probably BS. And then finally, if you have good eyesight, you don't need to have an eye exam. This again could not be more further from the truth. Just because somebody may have good eyesight, maybe they can hit the 2020 line when they're at the doctor's office or maybe at a school screening or something like that, or maybe you passed your driver's test, that doesn't mean that you don't have an eye disease or some other systemic disease going on that could lead to blindness. In fact, blinding eye conditions like glaucoma don't affect your 2020 vision until the absolute end of the disease. And a lot of people don't even know that's going on because they've never gone in to have an eye exam to get their eye pressure checked or have their eyes studied and looked at. In fact, last week I was able to catch diabetes in somebody who had no idea that they were diabetic. And that was simply from just dilating their eyes and taking a look at their retina. So yes, please, even if you think that your vision's good, if you think that your children's vision is good because they don't complain about it, that doesn't mean anything. Please bring them in, get them officially thoroughly checked, make sure that not just that they're seeing their best, but that your eyes are healthy. Having an eye exam is one of the least invasive procedures that you can have that has the most health benefits and outcomes from it. Even health insurance agencies know this, and that's why a lot of health insurances do cover an annual eye exam. So at the very least, I hope after watching this video, if you haven't had your eyes checked this year, please schedule an eye exam. Okay, so those were the most common eye health and vision myths that I've ever heard or could find on the internet. Let me know if you have any questions or myths that you've heard of and drop those in the comment section below because maybe we'll do a round two of this type of video. Otherwise, if you wanna learn more cool things about the eye, such as how stress affects our eyes and vision, I did a whole video about that that people seem to really love. So I think you might like this one too. Check that out and we'll see you in that video.